Previous meeting, 715 of 19, copies of which are in the packets. Any revisions or corrections to the minutes necessary? If not, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion by Kelbach, second by Herbst. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. The minutes are approved. Item number two is to consider approval or denial of various license applications. Um, we have a couple recommended for denial this evening. Um, let's see, and in order we'll call them. Um, obviously our ordinance allows for um, anyone denied for a license to come and address this committee um, and discuss the denial and indicate to the committee why they feel that the recommendation of the police department should not be upheld, um, including if something is factually inaccurate on those records. Um, the first person we have recommended for denial is um, public transport driver license applicant Joshua Sly. Is Joshua Sly with us this evening? Come on up, Joshua. Um, state your name and address for the record. And um, Joshua Lee Sly, 1204 Town Line Road, Wasp, Wisconsin, 54403. Okay. And uh, with that, um, now in our process, um, you have the right to um, submit documentation of rehabilitation and have that be um, reviewed by the chief in his deliberation as to whether or not the license should be accepted or denied. Um, following submission of those documents, um, the recommendation did come back to uphold that denial. Um, I guess talk to us a little bit about um, you know what may have changed in the record, or you know do you have additional information that you wish the committee to know about? Uh, kind of trying to figure out why it was denied further. I mean, it's originally denied over a 1998 case, uh, which was some time ago. Um, I served prison in time, was released on parole, was based administrative action grant to get off parole and probation early. Uh, never had any violations the entire time on parole. Uh, in 2007, after I was released at that point, I had no criminal contact. Uh, five years later, yes, I received a OWI. It was a municipal first offense. Uh, subsequently, I paid all fines and everything for that. Uh, due to my being a single parent of three, I struggled to make ends meet, did fail to pay $170 in fine, which ended up getting my license revoked. Uh, so I did get one driving after Rev. Uh, but that was the only criminal incident from, you know, my release in June 3rd of 2005 until uh, July 20th of 2015. So we're talking over a decade over half of which was without supervision and any police contact, uh, where I did pick up three misdemeanor cases after having spinal injections in my neck and be given uh, Lyrica and other Neurotin. Had a meltdown while the cops were try you know, questioning me. Things were said, things happened. I picked up uh, you know, the three misdemeanor cases, which I served a year on probation, also a year of day report. Well, now, was that on the record? Was that the disorderly and resisting <laughs> obstructing Correct. in 2015? Okay. Correct. That was all one incident. Uh, the judge was favorable because of the medication and the year of day reporting. I did well on bond, and while they established a DA that could be there for more than one court hearing, uh, they gave me a year of probation, which I served without a single violation. Everything was paid, all community service. Sir, that was two years ago, and since then I've not had single police contact, uh, other than the various letters. Okay. Uh, for, you know, my searching out my. My, my suspicion is record. that the the totality of the record, I think, maybe is coming into play here with the denial recommendation. Do you want to weigh in, Chief, a little bit on Mr. Sly's record and the documents that you had reviewed um, that led to your um, continuing that denial? Yes, uh, so, so the, the initial felony burglary was the initial reason for uh, recommending a denial based on um, the, the additional offenses beyond the, um, the, in, the initial incarceration and parole um, that Mr. Sly served. I, um, I still maintain to recommend deny uh, based on the additional offenses, the resisting, obstructing, the disorderly conduct, the um, operating without a license. Okay. Do you have, Mr. Sly, I guess um, you had submitted some documentation for review. Um, relevant to the um, felony burglary charge. Do you have additional documentation that you want to or are able to submit um, to show proof of rehab for these other violations? Because if that's the case, we could defer action on this for, it, either way. For which violations? The one that happened well, in 2015 um, or 1913 and 15. We don't have documentation 
um, for any of those um, between the OWI, um, operating after revocation, disorderly conduct, and resisting and obstructing. Um, I don't believe any of that stuff was included in that review. Just so you are aware too, Joshua, everything you submitted in, as Lisa was saying, prior to the 2012, everything you had with the, the probation and um, I'm not using the proper words here, was submitted to the committee. Well, I mean, I do have like copies of the, the municipal drunk driving. It wasn't a criminal DWI. It was a municipal ordinance. Uh, uh, but other than that, no other than my letter of reference from uh, Diane Seinholz, who I've worked with the last two years since being on supervision, and who is also the person who signed all my uh, uh, paperwork back in 2012 mm -hmm. from the uh, clerk of courts, uh, giving me raving review and reference, uh, referral. And I don't think that comes lightly from her. She would know me uh, or, you know, the entire criminal system in here, having, you know, 20 years experience working with them which is why she wrote that letter of reference to me, <coughs> where our, our police chief's only prior experience with me other than this was, you know, some secondary maybe grudge. That he might I don't have think that we should sister. discount the validity of the police chief's review. I don't think that bodes well. I think we need, yeah, go ahead. This is the assistant city attorney. Do you have copies of um, your successful discharge from probation from 2015 on the disorder? Uh, no, they didn't. Uh, they didn't provide mail with that. Uh, they actually let me off about six days early, and my probation officer, uh, Agent Tao, just told me not to be in trouble. I can look online, but if I don't owe any money, they wouldn't send me any paperwork other than the judgment of conviction if I owed any money to the clerk of courts. It's my understanding because it was just misdemeanor probation, and they don't... Uh, uh, from my understanding from Mr. Tao, they don't give you uh, a paperwork stating that. Uh, so, I mean, my, I do understand a few, and these weren't crimes of intent, and, and I mean, if I didn't have the felony in the 1990s, this wouldn't even be up to question, I don't believe, because I know you have violent offenders actually driving cab right now. They just happen to be misdemeanors with no, you know, felony past. Uh, so, I mean, I'm at a loss. Rehabilitation and fitness of 15 years, uh, I'm not sure that's, you know, how can I prove this? Have you guys had anybody with such a long term? And then all well, of a sudden, we, a we have, and the key, the key to our decision making here is not to compare you with anyone else's employees or a person that you know is perhaps but I, I'm also to defend myself. Right, but to say I'm I'm not as bad as some other person doesn't help us make a decision about you. And so ultimately what no, we No, but need I can't defend my code of conduct if I don't have a level to base it off of. You guys, I mean, I can't. I've been through, <laughs> I don't we, explain what it. Like what we look at is violations that are substantially related to the occupation that you're seeking to serve. Right. And so, of course, if you're looking to be a public transport driver, um, we hold our public transport drivers to a high standard because often they are tasked with transporting people who are impaired, whose judgment is not sound. And so as a person that's tasked with getting those people where they need to go, yours needs to be. And so we need to know, um, you know, that anybody that we're given that license to is capable of carrying out that task and that there's not anything in the record, new or old, that would cause um, either some, you know, moral motivation or whatever to, you know, not operate to the high standard that we expect for our public okay. transport drivers. And we hold that same standard for bartenders and, you know, but many other licenses there's we not give. A charge on my record that would, in my adult record, there's not, I don't understand what the, where the conflict is. Nothing has been anything to do with any kind of decision making or public safety or any of that, quite honestly. I'm well, really, I mean, with what we see in the record, all of it bodes to decision making. I mean, the, the idea that. Well, we're not getting the specifics. We, the, the OWI was a morning after, not a night of. I, was, I blew all zeros and then zero, zero, 004. I happened to take a blood draw because but I had a bad day. In the eyes of the committee, ball. drunk driving is drunk driving. Okay. You know, and so whether it's a state ticket or a municipal one, if you're behind the wheel and you're impaired, we're concerned about that. Fair enough. It was, like you said, the morning after. I don't believe I was impaired. It was a blood draw, the breathalyzer I passed, and uh, frankly, I'm not the only one in the room with an OWI. So, I mean, I, whatever. I, I'm not going to do myself any favor here, so I, I rest I, your guys' decision. I, Thank you. Have a good I would say, um, so with, with that, um, 
barring a motion from a member of the committee to consider Mr. Sly's application separately, we can l allow it to remain with the batch. Um, the second person who is recommended for denial on public transport driver is a renewal for Zachary Wilson. Um, Zachary Wilson with us this evening, come on up. And now the materials that we have in the committee indicate that um, evidence of rehabilitation was also submitted for you and that following Chief Bliven's review, um, he is still recommending denial on that one also pending the results of a drug test from the Wisconsin State Lab of Hygiene. Um, the results that you submitted were not state, val uh, state validated results. Um, have you since had subsequent testing? I have, ma'am. Uh, on the day of May 10th, I was, um, I saw I was stopped in an insured vehicle. My license was good. Uh, I was illegally searched. I was not on probation or parole, which I'm still not. And they basically, they took me and they gave me a blood test and they told me to be back in a few weeks to a few months. And the results still ain't back. Soon as I was released, the next morning I went and took a drug test for the Salvation Army, signed, stamped, dated, and documented, passed a 12-panel test. And basically, I don't think that I should be denied of work on, you know what I mean? I still haven't been convicted of anything. There's, there's no proof of any crime. Have you followed up on the test results with the entity that I tested have, you? I have. I have. I've called them. They said they've only had part of them back, and they're still waiting for the rest of them to come in. Okay. Um, the committee has a choice to delay action on this denial in either direction until we have those results. Um, you know, obviously that would hold up your getting the license, but it certainly wouldn't result in a, in a denial tonight if we know that there are um, state certified results that are pending. So, I mean, obviously the committee could make that choice to hold up a decision on Mr. Wilson until we have validated results. If, if they've got part of it and they're waiting for the other part, Mr. Peckham. I, th I n noticed that too, that it's pending, but I wanted clarification on what the pending part is. It was OWI um, and there was a blood test and I assumed that they were testing for alcohol but uh, it says still recommending denial pending the drug test from the State Lab of Hygiene. So are we testing for alcohol or? Chief Bliven probably has that drug? answer. Um, so this is a Wisconsin State Patrol arrest. Um, it wasn't a City of Wausau arrest. Um, I did I did get the report from the State Patrol and read it. Um, um, he was arrested for uh, OWI um, with a suspicion of drugs being in the system. So the way the Wisconsin State Lab of Hygiene operates is they run an initial test for alcohol screen, um, and then uh, based on that test being negative, they, they do a drug screen. But that is typically a three to six month response from Wisconsin State Lab of Hygiene to get those results back. Um, so that's why it's still pending because of the drug, um, the drug component of the arrest. And this okay. happened in May? Correct. Okay, so the committee could essentially um, defer action on this item until we have those results, knowing that it could take um, another month or two to get them, but that then would stave off a denial. It's just up to the committee. If you wanted to um, pull Mr. Wilson off of the batch and hold him for a decision at a future meeting, we could do that. I would uh, ask that we do just that, to pull him uh, for uh, reconsideration at a later date. Okay. When the that test information All is right. in. So you're not denied today, um, but you're not approved today. We need some we need some more results and we're willing to wait for them. And so once we get that information, then we can make a decision. And as soon as we have that information, we'll put you back on the agenda and uh, okay. go forward. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Um, so with that, um, also, you've got um, a special event that some e uh, information was emailed out about. Um, it's a United Way fundraiser event. Um, and uh, it's a second annual, so we have approved that in the past. Um, we don't have any other denial recommendations to consider tonight, so at this point I would uh, consider a motion to accept or deny licenses as recommended by staff if someone wishes to make that motion. Motion by Kelbach. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Peckham. Understanding that this decision then will um, not include Zachary Wilson. Um, we'll consider him at a separate meeting. Members in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed, so that motion then has passed. Um, item number three 
is consider request for waiver of chapter 9.04.025 consumption of or possession of intoxicants on streets uh, requested by the Wasser River District for their exhibit tour event coming on September 28, 2019. Um, I know in this committee in the past we've had exhaustive discussion about exhibit tour. However, we recognize that the state law has changed and that exhibit tour um, in, in the past has been conducted without issue and we have previously approved permits for exhibit tour to operate um, where they are allowed to traverse the local sidewalks during the time of the event um, carrying a glass of wine. Um, does anyone have questions about that event or about their application? If not, is there a motion to approve the um, waiver for exhibit tour? Motion by Peckham. Is there a second? Second by Herbst. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries as well. Um, now, if there's no objection from within the committee, I would like to move up item number six. Um, we have someone who'd like to talk to the committee tonight who has somewhere else to be. And so I'd like to move up communications and... Uh, uh, Mr. Kim Lemke has uh, requested to speak to the committee um, to bring something to our attention. Um, whether or not it warrants future action, um, we'll determine, and if we need to, we can always put it on an agenda later. So, Mr. Lemke, if you want to come up and talk to us ab about your issue. Absolutely. Uh, good evening, and uh, I want to say thanks to uh, Tony to pointing me in the right direction and getting me here tonight. Um, I guess what I want to start by saying is, is I have gone to the Wisconsin Valley Fair, and I don't want to tell everybody how old I am, but I've been going to the Wisconsin Valley Fair um, with my family, um, with my mother and dad when I was very, very small, and now I attend the Wisconsin Valley Fair as a vendor, and I've been there for nine seasons. I've also been invited by the fair board to discuss some of the problems with the fair, because I think if any of you have been out to the fairgrounds, you see that our uh, Wisconsin Valley Fair is depleting in attendance. Um, as a business person, this worries me, um, but also from an entertainment, from a family perspective, it worries me because I don't want to see the fair disappear. Um, I don't know if the topic that I'm going to discuss um, warrants more discussion. I don't know a lot of the details. All I know is since 1986, the beer gardens have become um, and for lack of a better term, beer cages or beer areas. Um, it's the attendance at the Wisconsin Valley Fair has significantly dropped off. And I'm not saying opening up um, the beer garden or the beer tent or the beer cage is going to solve all that problem for the Wisconsin Valley Fair. But there's some things that I think we need to keep in mind when looking at this issue. Um, the Wisconsin Valley Fair is a family event. Um, when I would go with my parents, my mother and dad very rarely ever drank, but they did drink a pitcher of beer at the Wisconsin Valley Fair with neighbors, with friends, and they walked the midway and supported what the kids were doing, which made it a family event, and everybody kind of traveled as a pack down the midway, but they were keeping tabs on their kids. Something I've noticed being out there, being a vendor, and stopping in at the beer tent to see other vendors or friends that are there, if your kids are out on the midway and the parents are in the beer garden, um, there's no communication. And if there's a band playing and your kids are on the midway, separated from the parents, um, it makes it very difficult to keep that communication. I always like to know where my kids are when they're at the fair. Um, I'm not saying that this is going to be the solve-all I, I'm just, I guess I want some clarification why if, you know, we have something on the 400 block and there's 3,000 people there for a concert and we're inviting these people to have open containers, um, to be up there to enjoy the concert, um, to enjoy their family and friends, why Marathon Park, which is a park, should not be opened up to letting people um, transport containers drink beverages responsibly, and work with the fair to put wristbands on the individuals that are of age so that it's easier for security, not only checking IDs to go into the beer garden, because it's going to be visible if these people are old enough and they're in there getting alcohol, um, and they would have a wristband on so they're identifiable to security 
um, whether it's security company or the police department. And my understanding is um, it's been pretty well staffed as far as security, um, not only uh, the security company, but the police department. Uh, several fairs have opened up their midways to this. Um, Anago was the most recent um, without incident or accident as far as I know. So I guess I would just like to take back and, and have the Wisconsin Valley Fair be the way it used to be, the camaraderie, the families, and keeping families together out on the midway um, and not making it a segregated thing. Okay. Um, and I think what we can do is, um, for obviously we have a long time before the next Wisconsin Valley Fair, and I think we can um, certainly consider or at least have a discussion um, in earnest about um, the reasons why we impose an enclosure requirement at the Wisconsin Valley Fair and why we have chosen to, on a case-by-case -case basis, exempt certain venues and certain events um, where we feel the controls are in place. And so uh, the only question I would have for you now, because we're under communication, so we can't have a detailed discussion, but in your discussion with the Fair Board, is it your sense that the Fair Board is not supporting the enclosure requirement? Because in past years, they've not only supported it, they've advocated for it to continue. Um, I haven't got into the specifics. I've been asked what sort of things would revitalize the fair and bring the fair back to the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. Nobody's actually said, yeah, that, you know, it's detrimental to the fair. But I think, you know, when everybody gets hit, um, when you get hit in your pocketbook, and I think, you know, over the course of time, obviously if the fair is coming to vendors and local vendors, and the reason this is kind of in my front yard right now and why it's affecting me is I've participated in the Wisconsin Valley Fair for nine seasons and I've talked to a lot of people and you know the certain comments that are made people would like to be able to go and enjoy a beverage responsibly walk around or watch the concert um, you know responsibly and not be forced to drink in a segregated area. Well, and at some um, events that take place in Marathon Park, we have allowed um, alcohol to proceed into the grandstand because it's largely self-contained um, for certain events. For the Wassa Marathon, we've done that, and we've done it for the 4th of July. You know, I don't think that the committee is unreasonable, and we're certainly not unwilling to have a discussion about these things, but I think key input to that um, is going to be um, the insight of the police department that patrols that area, um, and has to manage alcohol within the fairgrounds because there were some very serious problems at one point that led to the enclosure requirement. And uh, also, the opinion of the fair board um, is going to be key. But we certainly could um, place that item on an agenda between, you know, now and January and, and have some honest discussion because we've had trouble with serving underage out there. We've had trouble with, you know, certain beer gardens and, and some more so than others. And so I think I, I would be up, if the committee is up, to have a discussion about the fair in general and how alcohol operates out there. I think, I'm sure Chief Bliven would like to participate in that discussion. We could put it on a future agenda. And we yeah. would welcome vendors and the fair board to come to the meeting and talk with us. Yeah, absolutely. I, I uh, served uh, beverages at Days Bulletin for 20 years. And we saw the influx of the fair crowd. And I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, but the fair... Um, the carnival people um, are very extensively screened now, and this is a little bit different crowd. I know there was a lot of problems. We, we called the police department numerous times at the bowling alley at the bar for disturbances and things like that. Um, I think things have changed considerably. Um, not that you're ever going to alleviate the underage drinking, but I think the majority of the underage drinking is coming from outside the fair and they're coming in after they've consumed the alcohol. I think if you regulated it with a wristband, um, you would significantly um, di diminish the security required to run the beer gardens because the people that would be entering and exiting would have the wristbands on signifying that they were old enough to consume alcohol. Okay, I think we could certainly have that discussion in the future. I know that the police department also runs compliance checks at the fair in the beer gardens and the results of some of that activity will also be germane to our discussion. So why don't we plan to put that on an agenda um, you know, during the uh, cold weather months, you know, obviously we would need to let the fair know one way or the other well in advance so they can plan for things, you know, if we were intending to make any changes. But I think we could certainly have that discussion and, you know, perhaps have that, I guess, committee, are you amenable to having it in November? I mean, that's usually when we get through event season, our agendas are not quite so full. 
Mr. Peckham. I think we can have it uh, as soon as we can, but the key is going to be the fair board input. So very, very uh, much. And so. I don't know how often they meet. So we sure. Have to okay. Get with them. But yeah, we certainly could invite those representatives, and and obviously Marathon County owns that park, so we need to uh, include them in the conversation as well. So, but we'd be happy to talk about it. If I could just interject, I don't think you said your um, address. My address, um, 4704 Fuller Street, and that's in Schofield. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, so we'll, we'll continue the discussion, definitely. Well, thank you all so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Um, next item on our agenda is item number four, and that's a hearing. Um, the petitioner is May Cantrell, the owner of a dog, Right Shoe. Um, appeal of a prohibited dangerous animal designation. And uh, do we have um, Ms. Cantrell with us this evening? Okay, come on up. Um, any witnesses that you've brought with you today to testify? Yes, three. Okay, um, bring them up. And uh, we also have Humane Officer Bishop with us. Um, the clerk will swear in all of the witnesses at one time. So I'm going to swear everybody in, and then when I'm done, I'm going to have each one of you come to the microphone and state your name and your address, okay? Please raise your right hand. Do you solemn, oh, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony which you shall give in the matter now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. yes. Okay. We'll start with you, Officer Bishop. Humane Officer Bishop, Wasa Police Department, Everest Metro. Thank you. And ma'am in the orange, we'll have you come forth. Name and address? Michelle Harris, 710 and a half Plummer Street. Thank you. May Cantrell, 801 Plummer Street. Thank you, sir. David Cantrell, 801 Plummer Street. Excellent. Carrie Kenya, 805 Plummer Street. Thank you okay. so much. Madam Chair, all those giving testimony today have been sworn. Thank you. Um, Ms. Cantrell, we'll begin with you. Um, obviously, you're aware that the committee um, considered a dangerous dog designation um, pertaining to right shoe last fall. And uh, we upheld the um, recommendation of the police department at that point, um, which certainly allows you to keep right shoe in the city, but it also um, requires that you comply with certain parts of the ordinance. Um, before we get underway with the hearing, I just want to verify that you've received the following documents. Um, obviously, you received notice of this hearing today. Um, that was um, issued on August 7th. And uh, in with that, um, you, did you also receive a copy of the um, Prohibited Dangerous Animal Ordinance and the declaration? Yes, I okay. believe so. Uh, a, copy a copy of a letter dated May 24th, 2019 to you considering, concerning a deadline for inst installation of fencing in a kennel? I'm sure I did. Okay. A uh, copy of the Dangerous Animal Registration Application dated February 2019? Yes. A redacted copy of uh, police report associated with this matter? Yes. Three photographs of the back of your property? Yes. And a copy of the findings, in fact, issued by this committee from November? Yes. Okay. Um, so with that, um, you know, we've read your appeal. Um, we've received your documents. Um, this, this is a little bit um, out of the ordinary because the humane officer did allow you an extensive period of time to install the fencing and the kennel um, to keep right you under control um, because the designation came out in the winter and it's difficult to install such things in a cold, cold weather climate. So um, I guess talk to us a little bit about what steps you've taken to comply with the ordinance to date. Um, I am aware that I got ample amount of time, which was greatly appreciated. I received several estimates from different fence companies of which I anticipated that I would be able to get a loan. Um, it took a lot longer and I still actually do not have my home equity line of credit established yet. It is still underway. Um, in the meantime, I put up a chain link fence and I now have a kennel, however, but the city of Wassa, because it was mixed materials, um, said I had to change the fence. And my husband and I have been trying on several occasions to um, get a building permit. Um, the latest attempt was again yet today because um, of other things we've been said we had to change this and that. And today, um, one of the comments was the 
fencing along our hedge had to be three feet high. And we are going to do standard chain link, which is standard four feet high. I did have green garden fencing and I said, perfect, this is four feet high, I mean three feet high, great, we can do that. And then we can finish with a chain link in the wood. However, today they um, said we would have to change the plan because the green fencing we had in mind, which is metal, would not keep a dog back. However, I didn't ever say I was trying to maintain a dog. Um, I don't know if particularly it speaks to the type of fencing. My main concern is, and I offer my um, apologies, is but this committee and Officer Bishop to recognize my electric fence as a barrier. I know back in the fall, one of the people said that Raichu went across the sidewalk to get bite her child and come back in. I 100% disagreed with that then, as I do now. She's the only person that has come forth and requested money from me privately. Um, and I know I can't speak to what happened in the fall. However, one of the things a dangerous animal is, is two unprovoked instances and where the dog has shown aggressive aggression and has chased. She has never done that. The first incident was provoked by a teenager that was well within 20 feet of the property. So even if I had a little three foot fence there, that teenager could have put his hand over it and would have still gotten bit in the same spot. That being said, if the thing is I have to have a three foot chain link fence, if it wasn't for that electric barrier, she would easily jump over three the, feet. The committee though, um, in its findings initially, um, believed that without the um, added security measures required under the dangerous dog ordinance, we did not believe that at the time that you had the ability or the will to prevent another bite. And so our ordinance doesn't require that a dog give chase to be designated. Any dog that bites or causes injury unprovoked counts. Correct. The first incident was provoked. Okay. So my question, though, was what steps have you taken to comply with the ordinance to date? There's I the have... collar requirement. There's the kennel. There's the collar. There's the sign posting. There's the purchase of dangerous dog insurance. Correct. Okay. And I've done what have, what have you done? You've done everything I have but the... the insurance I have a leather collar for her when she is out on a walk I have her muzzled even though when I brought her to officer Bishop I thought that she was also going to assess um, right use demeanor at the time however that wasn't her intent um, I have put up a fence I've taken one down I do have a kennel um, the rest of the fence I just need to put up. I wasn't going to because I was waiting until this hearing to see because I really would like um, wood, but I wanted to see the outcome of this hearing. And well, the, out, the outcome of the November hearing was that you were required to comply with the provisions of the ordinance and none of those were left off of the list. So what we're looking at is that it has taken over eight months um, to get those things. You know, right now, the hearing today is whether or not Raichu is now a prohibited dangerous animal. Okay, I am asking perhaps maybe you could list her as dangerous. I don't know. Um, Officer Bishop would have to. She's already dangerous. Correct. She, was, she has that but designation I, today. Okay, if she's prohibited... then she wouldn't be adoptable. I'm willing to because apparently I can't get it together. I'm sorry, I cannot. No. no, just let me a second. You know, we had a major death in the family, June 2nd, okay? We have been working on this fence. Wasa makes it very, very difficult for anything, for one. For two, I want to also ask a question as how everybody in the city seems to know her business. 
Well, first, but anyways, let me, let, but, first, but let me this just, dog let, is not dangerous. Hold on I a would second. like to adopt it. I'm in charge of this hearing. Okay. And I didn't, I, I, I did not call you up, but I'm going to take your testimony. Now I will tell okay. you, check your attitude. Fine, I will. I don't but want to hear how Watson makes life difficult. Adopt it. You're required it to follow I mean, the rules and the ordinances. Yes, you are. But and when you build a fence, you need a to, permit. We are trying to get building permits and everything. And they just keep, it's, it's one roadblock after another, it seems like. We are trying to work with you and we're trying to keep this dog alive. Okay? And if anything, I am moving to a very small yard where just the, What's the, not the fence, but the enclosure Kettle. thing would be more than enough because that'd be basically my whole yard. So I'm going to, if it's taking them to a long time, you've got to have money to put up a fence and then where to put it and yada, yada, yada. And like I said, these two are going through enough already, okay? We've had a major death in the family and yeah, it's not an excuse, but we're working on it. We are very much trying, but you have to have money. Okay. Okay, so you're, you you're have taking have the dog now? You're going to rehome this dog? I would like to if, if that's what it takes. Otherwise, we just need time to get these fences up. Where do you live? Are you in the city? I am going to be moving to West. On, you know where West is and the old alibi? I'll be a block away from that. That's okay, still so still in the city? Yes, still okay, within so the city. The, the, the dog has been designated dangerous already. Yes, I am, I'm aware of that. So when you take a dangerous dog, you're subject to those same requirements that May is. And the hearing today is not to decide whether or not Raichu is a dangerous animal. That's been decided in November. And we were not willing at the time to walk back any of those requirements. So those requirements are still in force today. The only thing this committee has to decide today is whether or not Raichu is prohibited dangerous. And that changes the designation, which requires her to either be rehomed or euthanized within five days. And so whether or not she's not going to be, the dangerous designation is not getting removed. She's dangerous Correct. today. Correct. And the rehoming has to be outside of the city limits. Correct. So that's, that's what we have to decide today is, are we going to uphold prohibited or not based on the length of time the compliance has taken? Okay. And so if your intent is to take the animal but still reside in the city, the requirements are no different than they are for May. Okay, but why, why, why is it prohibited though? I don't, I don't understand. I didn't have the fence up in time. Can we rehome her <laughs> through the, the Humane Society? Well, so this talk is not that dangerous, you guys. That's what I. That's what I'm not understanding. Fine. How do we put her down? Because that's no. That's what's going to happen. You know it. But why? Can we just, if we get the proper fencing up, does she have to be put down? If it's, the, if the committee upholds the prohibited designation, the dog cannot reside in Wausau with either one of you. If the, committee, the, if the fencing? committee does not uphold the prohibited designation, the dog could stay in the city, but the, all the requirements need to be met. And that's what we have to decide today, prohibited or not. But the list of things that need to be done doesn't change. Okay. That's, so, that's fine. We are working on the fence. I mean, but it, like I said, it takes money. We are trying to do everything we can to get loans and everything. And okay. I mean, we have the materials. We just have to finish getting it together okay. together. But I, I really don't think she should be prohibited. And I mean, cause she's not that dangerous and that's why we brought her. She lives right next door. We, you know, I mean, the, the driveways are together. That what separates okay. these driveways and the electric fences this wide, literally. Okay, so thank you for your testimony. Now I have some questions for May. May, how many animals do you have today at home? How many animals are at your home right now? I own two. Lucy and little one. Okay. Well, right you. Okay. Do you have any other animals that are staying with you temporarily? Diesel. So you're in possession of three dogs? At this moment, yes. Without a pet fancier permit? Because I cannot apply one for one because right you was designated dangerous. Okay. And diesel came into our household just a couple months ago. It's, she's been there longer than we anticipated. 
but either way, I knew I couldn't um, apply for one because that's one of the things is I couldn't apply for the pet fans here. Okay. All right. Um, committee members, any questions for me? If not, you can go ahead and have a seat. Okay. Um, any questions for David? Come up and. Um. First off, thank you for hearing us. Um, this is, a, of course, a very touchy subject. Um, I happen to be very close to Raichu. You know, she, she is a dog that will literally protect me with her life. And we should have never gotten to this point to begin with. Um, I would personally would like to ask if you would just give us to the end of September, and if everything is not met, so be it. We know what's going to happen. But just please give us that time. Um, we are doing everything that we can. We are applying for loans. We are waiting for BMO to get back to us with the home equity loan, which is, which is a good thing that it might be happening, and then that wouldn't be an issue. Um, we, ha I, we have been trying to get numerous times to get <clears throat> the permits for the fence. Okay. And, and we've been doing everything that we can. And, you know, if you just give us to the end of September, I think that's realistic and reasonable. And then, well, if, and then we can go from there. And, I mean, I, I know you all have given us a lot of time as it is, but, I mean, you know, you know, she's family, and I'm sure none of y'all would like would want to be in the same situation as as we are in with this. Okay, um, the committee will certainly take that under consideration. Um, you've also brought with you your neighbor. Yes. Um, come on up. Um, you have um, new testimony to offer beyond what we've heard from May and David. Um. Just the, the dog is not dangerous. I know you've already deemed him dangerous, but um, it never leaves the yard ever. And I, it just, it's, it's not a bad dog is all I've really got to say. I mean, it's not dangerous. It doesn't attack anyone. It's just, it doesn't leave the yard. They've got an underground fence that, mm -hmm. you know, the dog is so terrified will never cross over that fence. Okay. So. The committee um, does not accept as admissible evidence um, statements that the dog is um, is good or has received training since the incident. Um, so with that, I'll ask the committee to um, give the proper weight to those statements. Um, we also have with us for testimony tonight, uh, Humane Officer Bishop, if you'd like to come up. Um, you guys can be seated. I don't know if it if we want to do this before Officer Bishop, but I was asked, wondering uh, if uh, Michelle, uh, if you could tell us how long it would take you to get your property. Uh, first of all, I don't know your relationship with the Cantrells. I'm, I am a sister. Okay. So how long would it take? And if I had the money, I mean, they would have had a fence up, but I don't. <laughs> okay. So. How long would it take for you to get a, a fence up that would meet the requirements? Um, I am moving. It's by September 1st. Um, my husband works, the guy that we're renting from, it's his boss. I, I'm sure he'll let me put up whatever kind of fence I want. So I mean, how long would it take? The month of September? Yes. Okay, thank I you. I mean, one, one of us will have a fence that, and a kennel that goes inside the fence. Is that correct? That's what's needed? Okay. okay. And I just, I know my yard is, that I'm moving to is a lot smaller than hers, and the big kennel part that we have would probably take up the majority of my yard. So, I mean, literally the dog would be going, when I let it out, it would be going into that kennel and back in. Okay, thank you. You know, because I wouldn't have a yard for it to roam in and at all anyhow. Very good. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Humane Officer Bishop, if you want to uh, walk us through your um, activity since we last heard about Right You in November. Um, we're, we're interested in your impression of the situation. Okay. Um, 
I attempted several times to follow up with May as far as uh, the fencing, um, as well as microchip. Uh, the microchip took an extended period of time also to actually get into Raichu. The vet clinic was not willing to do it without the dog actually even being sedated um, due to behavior issues with the dog. Um, so in February, I was finally able to get the information um, for the microchip. Um, February 20th, actually. Um, and then May had said that she would contact me come spring once the th ground thawed uh, about putting in the fence, and I did not receive phone calls from her. Um, I attempted on a couple of occasions to call and left voicemails and did not receive return calls. So I issued a letter in May um, and giving a June 15th deadline for the fence to be put in. Um, I, driving past the property, could see that there was no fence up, there was no kennel up, there was other projects going on within the home, um, but that was not done at that time. So, um, on I believe it was July 30th, I um, made contact and um, we, uh, that's what, July 30th, um, I'm sorry, backtrack. July 26th, mm -hmm. I went and I took photographs of the property that there was no fence. It was a partial fence. It was not um, completely finished off. It was, and I could tell that it was probably not up to code uh, for WASA. So I had asked the, contacted the city inspectors and asked them to check into the code of the fence um, because that does have bearing on, you know, the fence that we allow. Um, so I took photographs at that point in time, and myself and one of the CSOs on the 30th actually returned to the house to deliver the paperwork for the prohibited dangerous animal. Um, we, when we arrived, there was a dog that actually was uh, very similar in coloration to Raichu uh, running around the property. Um, that, that one ended up being Diesel, which is owned by May's daughter, who is at the time, it is my understanding, currently living with her. Um, the dogs look very similar, just right is a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, so I delivered the paperwork to her, to May's daughter, um, and May later called me um, asking for more time um, to get the fence and asked for 24 hours. Um, however, while I was on the phone with May and uh, assessing licensing, um, it, I found that her dangerous animal license has also not been issued. So we now have violations of uh, the kennel not properly being put up, the fence not being put up. She does not have the uh, licensing. The licensing was paid for, um, but due to some other outstanding fees, has not been issued. Um, so she is not in possession of that. Um, so in talking with my supervisor, we determined that we would take Raichu as a seized animal um, I went back with an officer, and during that discussion, um, when May brought Raichu out to me, um, May mentioned that uh, another officer had been at the house a couple days prior and had met Raichu. Back in November, when we originally agreed that we could, that they could wait on the fence because of the, uh, the frozen ground, um, I had told May that any time Raichu is outside, she is to be muzzled on a leather leash in the hands of an adult. Mm -hmm. um, I reviewed the video evidence um, from the officer that was there on July 21st, recognized the house and May in the video. Um, and I, I have the video here if you wish to see the body cam footage. Um, Raichu was not muzzled, was not on a leash, and the only thing that I believe she was under the control of was the underground fence. Um, you know, May has mentioned on a couple of occasions that um, if she tried to cross the fence, the fence would, quote, drop her. Um, I have concerns about that because that, to me, would possibly fall under animal abuse. Um, there's no reason that an electric fence should ever, quote, drop an animal. Um, I've actually had a veterinarian ask, well, does that mean that it's actually going to stop the dog's heart? 
So um, there's concerns there. After taking Raichu to uh, the Humane Society, May did mention that she went to the Humane Society to visit Raichu and then requested that I release Raichu back to her, um, that she would keep Raichu in the basement only and not let her outside, um, which I obviously was not okay with either. Um, you, you've had your chance, Ms. Cantrell. Um, okay, um, committee members, any questions for Humane Officer Bishop? Do you have any, Tara? I, w I was listening to a lot of the fence discussion. Um, does Ms. Cantrell and her family understand that the whole yard at their house doesn't need to be fenced, that it's a, you know, a, a fence adequate to house the dog with the kennel in it with the two feet? Or, I, I've or do they think they have to do the whole yard? I, I've explained it. Um, I guess I don't know what their understanding of that is, um, but I have explained that it, the fence only needs to be two feet outside of the kennel. kennel. <clears throat> the partial that we have the photos of looks like it is certainly not the entire lot. Um, it looks like their efforts that they put together were to cordon off a specific area and not the entire perimeter, at least from these photos that we have in the packets. In, I mean, none of the fence is completed, so I really don't know what the complete intention Intent was. That's true. Um, so, the, at your last interaction with them, are there there were three dogs in this home? Yes, and there, it's my understanding that there is at least another one that comes um, to be watched very frequently to the point that I've had neighbors tell me that it practically lives there. Um, I, we've been getting numerous complaints from the four dogs total potentially one may be claimed currently as a service animal what demeanor have you um, observed from right you in your interactions I mean the vet sounds like this dog is really anxious as far yes. as the sedation for the chip and that um, my, my interactions directly with her have been limited she's been fearful um, when I've uh, interacted with her. However, Humane Society staff mentioned, I asked today specifically, um, they really only have one staff member that she is okay with. The other staff members she is snappy and fearful of. Okay. Um, even through the kennel, she'll, if they go up and, you know, try to greet her gently and let them sniff her, she's snapping at them. They okay. typically are taking her out on a stiff leash unless it's one um, employee in particular, and mainly it's because she's unpredictable. Okay. Okay. Um, committee members, any additional questions for Humane Officer Bishop? If not, um, the committee then will go into closed session to deliberate and make a decision. Um, it will return with a decision yet this evening. Um, would somebody read the closed session verbiage um, so that we can get into deliberations? Under item four. I can do that. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I move we go into closed session pursuant to section 19.851A of the Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of considering the following, deliberating concerning a case which was the subject of any judicial or quasi-judicial trial or hearing before the governmental body. And we will reconvene an open session uh, afterward to announce the results. Okay, um, we have a motion to move into closed session. Is there a second? Aye. Second by Herbst. Roll call vote. Kalbach? Aye. Herbst? Aye. Peckham? Aye. McElhaney? Aye. I'll vote aye as well. We'll convene in closed session in the Maple Room and return to this chamber with a decision.